welcome to Scotland Team Talk, brought to you by Highland Spring. I'm Jill Douglas, and I'm here at Murrayfield with two of Scotland's Six Nations players, Lee Jones and Nick DeLuca. Evening, gentlemen. And the first question comes from Rory Donaldson for you, Nick. Uh, and he'd like to know what it's like the first time you pull on that blue Scotland jersey. How you feel? Well, first of all, hi, Rory. Thanks for your question. Um, I think is obviously when I was when I was young, probably younger than Rory is, about four. I always said I wanted to, as soon as I started playing rugby, I wanted to play for Scotland. So when I eventually got to pull on that jersey, it was a lifelong ambition fulfilled. And there's, there is no feeling like running out in front of a home crowd. It just fills you full of joy. It's, it's an amazing experience. Very proud. And Lee, of course, winning your first cap uh, at Murrayfield on Saturday. We did have a question similar for, from uh, one of the, the tweeters for you, which is how did it feel and how special a moment was it? Yeah, similar to uh, similar to Nick, it's something that you know. Since I was a wee boy, I've always wanted to pull on a on a Scotland jersey, and um, very special at the weekend. You know, it was kind of dream come true, and um, England at Murrayfield. I think that added a, an extra edge to it, and um, for it to be sold out at Murrayfield, um, no, it was brilliant, really special. Well, you know, 19, 20 year olds coming in, it's a great sign for the future, isn't it, Lee? As you say, so many young guys. Um, there's lots of lots of young talent pushing through, and it kind of it keeps guys on their toes. Um, guys in the national squad and older guys, more experienced guys, and that's it's brilliant for the team. Somebody else is tweeting here. Um, what? How can we get more youngsters involved in rugby? That's from Stuart Sinclair. What do you think, Nick? Um, obviously, we've got a lot of people in place at the SRU that are working on grassroots rugby, but I think, as a point of view of individually. Um, or as a, as a national team, we need to win. You know, we've got eight million people watching the game at the weekend, and what better way to inspire people to play rugby than than to win and put in a good performance? So, that's that's our goal is to go out, perform well, and hopefully inspire the young people to say, "Hey, I want to do that." Um, so, fingers crossed, we can do that on Sunday. Lee Michelle McGee, she asks, "What you remember most about playing sport in school, and did that experience impact when you decided to keep?" Did that help you decide to keep on playing uh, sport as you got older? Of course, you're from Selkirk, Selkirk High School. Yeah. And um, rugby would be a big, big deal in Selkirk. I was I'm just sure. going to say, yeah. So um, in Selkirk, it's kind of you grow up into the into the rugby and right throughout the high school. Um, you know, guys are out training after school and you know throughout PE and stuff. You know, I always enjoyed that um, when I was younger and. The rugby just kind of, just kind of came naturally. As I as I played rugby from a young age, um, you know I'd maybe I'd maybe try try my hand at other things, but I couldn't really kick a ball, so <laughs> football wasn't an option for me. But um, no, the the school's really good, and there were some good coaches down there, and that really helped kind of me stick at it. What about you, Nick? A bit, a bit longer ago that you were at school, not much. It's a, but... it a long time ago. From what I can remember, <laughs> um, rugby wasn't big in my school. Um, we would be lucky if we stayed within 100 points of a team. Um, and often the day of the game, I'd be running around the school begging people to play so the game wasn't cancelled. So we usually have about 12 on the pitch. Was that you down um, in Dumfriesshire? Yeah, I was at Lockerbie uh, High School and, and luckily Dumfries had a club, so I played for the for the school and for the club, and we were slightly more competitive at club level. Um, but yeah, so that's where I, where I got my graft as such. And Sean Maneen, um luckily put, took me on a under 16 Scottish school tour to Ireland, where is what, what kind of gave me my first break, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> this is from Graham Reid on Twitter. So he says, anyway, this is the big question. Sauce, red, brown, or reggae, reggae? I didn't even know there was such a sauce called reggae, reggae. There we are, red, brown, reggae, reggae. Now this is actually, this, this could take up the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of condiments out there, obviously, but it's depending on what you're having it with also, you know. Right then, um, what, what's the so rule? For example, if I, was, if I was at the chip shop, it would be salt and sauce, which is brown sauce. Um, reggae reggae sauce, which is um, <laughs> from a, a guy off Dragon's Den, actually, um, who the character was great, but the sauce I don't particularly like. And tomato <laughs> sauce goes with everything else. What about you, Lee? Um, you probably don't eat I'm gonna chips and things. That I'm going to have to say none. Ah, I've actually, look at that. I've actually got a bit of a phobia. Oh, well, not a phobia, but um, sauce is something that. It's the big question of the night. <laughs> you know, sauce say, is something that I can't just believe you just told your teammates that you don't like sauces <laughs> because I suspect <laughs> that you're going to live to regret that. Talk us through it a little. Oh, I think 
tomato sauce is the big one. I know it's is it on there? Well, red, yeah, red, yeah, yeah, red yeah. sauce, yeah. Um no, it's just <laughs> <laughs> I think Move on Hispanic. Yeah. We've, <laughs> we've thrown a curveball yeah. here. So it's brown at the tippy, <laughs> red with everything else. You don't like Can't sauce. Touch the stuff. And if you have too much, you can get rid of the taste with a little drop of the Highland Spring. <laughs> there you are. If you're cleansing the palate. Cleansing yes. the palate. Uh, right, we've got some quick questions for you here about your um, teammates. OK. Go. Who's the fastest? Uh, Scotland or Edinburgh here? Scotland. Scotland of course. Um, I'm going to go for Lee Jones. You don't I'm feel duty-bound? I'm going to have to back myself. I've not been in the squad long enough to kind of... To kind of find out the, if that's fact or not, but I'm, I'll back myself. Well, actually, tonight. if we're going on statistically, oh, oh here comes um, Jim Hamilton. Jim Hamilton. We wear um, GPS units, which tell you how far you've run, how fast you've run, and when you've run that fast. And Jim Hamilton clocked the fastest time or the fastest speed. Um, Debatable, I think. I love that. Which but is which play. is um, weird. Who's the slowest? <laughs> Oh, that's I'd, a tough one, actually. I'd like to see a race between Jeff Cross and Al Kelly. I'm, I'm not. Jeff's quite powerful. Oh, Al was very good at the running in the summer, actually. It's like very good. So um, I'm not. I'm not going to say. I'm gonna, You're not going to see Bob chunk. Chunk. Oh, chunk's a rapid. He's rapid. First two weeks. First two weeks. Who's the funniest? Who I take it back. Yeah. Who's the funniest? Um, Dan Parks, he has a great, great sense of humour. Okay, funny. I'd say Jim Hamilton. Big Jim, we yeah. love him. Um, we've had a, one of your teammates has been on. Funny that, uh, Lee Al Kellock wonders who's been your best roomie. Um, big Al, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, he was, he was quite interested in Don't his iPad at the time. So. Yeah, he's quite bad. At, he's quite antisocial. Yeah. Um, Technology's kind of ruined the art of conversation. Um, I really enjoyed rooming Chris Cusseter the other week because TV was off. We just sat and we, we chatted. It was just, it was just very nice. Yeah, <laughs> really enjoyed it. Right. Who in the squad would you not want to mess with? Um, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Alster, the biggest. Alistair Strokos. Yeah, I think he's... Strokes, yeah, yes. Definitely. He's a black belt, isn't he, in karate? Yeah, general demeanour and um, he's actually quite skilled with his fists. Right, OK. Uh, who spends the longest time in front of the mirror? Um, I was rooming with Dave Denton last week. Really? He, well, he's here. He it's likes, his, big, likes yeah. his hair, but no, not not too long. I, I think we're all all right. There's no fake tanners or eyebrow pluckers. Or, or Kelly Brown actually plucks his eyebrows, so that would take a while. We'll go with <laughs> Kelly Brown. <laughs> Who's the cleverest in the squad? Um, I would say Jeff Cross. Yeah. He's a doctor, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, and I'm also thinking it's the answer to the next question That's as well. Yeah, that was my, uh, <laughs> Who's not the cleverest? Yeah. Jeff Cross. Yeah. It, it can work both ways. Yeah, he's a big he's, lad now, be careful. He's, oh, yes, but he's, 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 he's very clever. Um, but then at the same time, it's also, you know, like when you're book smart and your common sense kind of, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of thing. <laughs> and these, the last of these ones about your teammates, who has the worst taste in music? Hmm. Only, really I can only speak enough, personally yeah. because taste is individual, but um, Arthur Strokosh is into his heavy metal and that, that doesn't do it for me. Are you a heavy metal fan? Uh, no. Nah. You just nah. said you don't want to mess with Alistair Strokosh, so... As I said, taste is personal, this is my <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen guys, fantastic. Thank you very much for your time and for uh, sharing. For having us. All of your thoughts. Um, finally, on behalf of Highland Spring and Scottish Rugby, I'd like to thank all of you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.